So um, I'm Peter Murray Rust. Um, thank you very much for um, inviting me. I'm. Um, oh, I need my friend. Uh, I'm going to upset a number of people. I'm sorry, but it's an upsetting uh, situation. I'm going to excite some others. If 10% of you are with me at the end, I shall feel very happy. Okay. Um, I spend much of my time with the Open Knowledge Foundation. Uh, if you haven't come across it, uh, the Open Knowledge Foundation is empowering through open knowledge, a global mo movement to open up knowledge and see it used and useful. Nothing to do with impact factors, nothing to do with uh, business models, but actually to make knowledge work for humanity. So that's going to be my theme. Um, and um, I'm afraid I have to start off by saying that I've had very bad experiences with Elsevier. I've publicly said that I won't work with them. Uh, I, first of all, declined this invitation. I have nothing against David and Anita and various other people, but I think Elsevier as a company and other commercial publishers are doing untold harm uh, to the scholarship of the world at the moment and causing great damage uh, in many places. Uh, as an example, I've spent five years developing text mining tools. Uh, we lead, uh, our group leads the world in chemistry. I've spent half that time trying to negotiate with Elsevier to deploy it on one paper in Elsevier, and I've received fob off after uh, platitude after whatever. The last one I got is yesterday where I asked for Elsevier to uh, deposit supplemental crystallographic information. I will show you that. And I got a reply uh, which I can only describe as completely dismissive. So um, that doesn't square with what David said. And if we can uh, see some way that uh, Elsevier is actually changing heart, uh, then I would be pleased. But at the moment, I haven't seen anything. My talk is as an HTML uh, slide. It's on the web. You can find it, Murray Ross blog, uh, and uh, follow it if you want, but don't all log in um, at once. So if you can't read it, it's all up there and so on. Um, Nelly Cruz, the Vice President of the European Commission, said uh, she is passionate about making Europe open. She said, I'm 71. I don't have to do it. I do it because I want to, and I'm inspired by the new generation. I'm 71, and I am inspired by the new generation, and I have the great privilege with working with some very exciting young people. And I would say, next time you run this meeting, I want to see people here who are under 35, because that is what is going to make it happen. <laughs> right. So... I concentrate on the long tail of scholarship. I'm going to give uh, examples from science, but this does not just relate to science, and there are many areas where what I say doesn't apply. Basically, the key thing is values. We have got our values wrong. If we get our values right, then the technology and the protocols follow. Uh, the communities uh, that I know and respect, and I'm going to talk about global knowledge communities, do it because they are a community, not because they are using particular um, uh, technology and so on. I'm going to give a few examples of communities that uh, work. Some of them are mainstream science, and some of them I have actually built the tools and the repositories with my bare hands, uh, and uh, with those of my colleagues, and some of them are examples from outside. So here's a typical hackathon last weekend across the world was open data day how many people took part in open data day excellent right uh, open data day was cities across the world working with the citizenry not the academics the citizenry and the, what was noticeable is how few academics were involved and they were building data for their cities uh, for journalism for all sorts of things like that and the Open Knowledge Foundation has created a data journalism handbook, which is widely used in, um, uh, in journalism. And you can see there the New, New York Times, the BBC, and so on. So my simple message is that we should create a global knowledge commons. Now, a commons is something that works without walls. That's Cambridge. Uh, that's a cow. Uh, I have eaten one of those cows or bits of it. Uh, it has the right to graze there because it's a commons. And Commons are what we should work for. And about 300 years ago uh, in, uh, in Britain, and particularly in Scotland and, and England, uh, the commons were enclosed by profit-seeking, um, uh, essentially robber barons, and the great tragedy was the destruction of society by the enclosure of the commons. 
we are fighting back. This is uh, University of Stanford with the mayor of Palo Alto who ran a citywide hackathon. Uh, they closed the streets off and they invited all the citizens of Palo Alto to come and hack for uh, 24 hours uh, to build an application for the city's geographical um, application. And that is the sort of thing we should be doing. It's exciting. It's the 21st century. This is our group here, uh, journalists, doctors, this was last Sunday, um, uh, people in finance and so on, almost everybody except academics. Now, I'm sure you all know who this is. I hope you do. That's Aaron Schwartz. And Aaron Schwartz uh, typifies our problem of broken values at the moment. Uh, there is a clash of cultures here, and it has uh, resulted in tragedy, and it has to be fixed. Uh, Aaron wrote a guerrilla manifesto. I hope you find time to read it. I'm not going to go through all of this here, um, but here is Tim Berners-Lee. We have lost a wise elder. And the point is, Aaron did this when he was 14. He built RSS when he was 14. Um, and... Um, Access to public knowledge is a fundamental human right. Now, interestingly, the scourge of RWN, so Daryl Issa also uh, said that at the bottom. I don't quite know um, why. He says, ultimately, knowledge belongs to the people of the world. And if we start on that premise, uh, then we will make some progress. Um, so, a mindset. Another example came out uh, a day or two ago. The access to the lack of access to scholarly information means people die. Now, I've said this before, uh, and I make no bones for saying it. It is, an, uh, it is a fact. Uh, and if you read this story of Jack Andraka, who, when he was 14, tried to invent a cure for um, pancreatic uh, diagnosis for pancreatic cancer, and uh, he was stopped by the paywalls. Now, there is something wrong with a culture that stops a 14-year-old researching into the uh, disease of his best friend. Uh, so we are in the middle of a digital revolution. Uh, and we are seeing a split between the cultures. And the young people are not accepting uh, what we have offered them. And they are changing the world. And if you're not part of that, uh, you will be left behind. So. Where do we look for some values? Well, I've been very inspired by uh, Ranganathan, the great um, uh, Indian librarian. How many people know his laws? Good. Uh, well, it, books are for use. Every reader, his book, every book, its reader, save the time of the reader. The library is a growing organism. You can read all this, by the way, on my blog. And I've put this as data belongs to the world. I'm quite sure he would have said that. He was clear that the knowledge was for humanity, not for the universities. Data is for use. Every reader, their data. In other words, somebody wants data. It's out there. The job is to get it to them. Every data needs the people who can use it. Save the time of the reader. And the data community is a growing organism. And that is true. And it's happening outside the walls of academia. Problems. Problems are vested interests and academic apathy. Uh, the vested interests are terrible. These are the commercial organizations. It's primarily the publishers, but it's also instrument manufacturers and software manufacturers and materials manufacturers. I've listed all of those. Uh, and they destroy the innovation and interoperability. They have destroyed the commons. And only with the commons will we find uh, the way to create those tools. Stand up the uh, creators of this video. Wave your hands. They said they were coming. Right. Fantastic. Brilliant video, right, uh, about how data gets lost. Most of that is due to not having the right social structure for data. If you build the right structure, it works, right? The problem is we are building walled gardens. And uh, this area is stuffed with walled gardens. Uh, Reaxis is a walled garden. Um, Facebook is a walled garden. I suspect Mendeley will now be a walled garden. The challenge is whether Figshare can remain not a walled garden. And to do that, it must have public governance uh, that is believable outside of uh, Macmillan. If 
organisations can have public governance of their services. If this open data up here has public governance, we have a chance. If it is just assertions by commercial organisations, uh, then it will always go the way of these others. I've made a video here. Um, if you're bored with the rest of the talk, you can uh, look at it. It, uh, it will break your heart. It's very tragic, right? So solutions and communities at work. Wikipedia, the best knowledge uh, tool in the 21st century, without question. Uh, how much did it cost academia? Nothing. When it came out, academia scoffed at it. Uh, I got up and said, I believe in Wikipedia. The bits I wrote are right. Uh, and that was quoted in The Guardian. <laughs> Uh, but academia should have said this is a wonderful new development, not there is a load of crap in Wikipedia, and they were wrong. Um, OpenStreetMap, how many people have built something with uh, OpenStreetMap or in it? Right. Okay, Open, here's, this is uh, where we are at the moment, Faculty House. This, it was done by one guy, Steve Coates, in London. Zero cash in the project. So cash is not the problem, it is the will. He said... I want to build a map of the world, and he went out, and he just got people enthused, and that's what I want to do here. I want to catalyze that uh, in the same way to build a global research uh, commons for those things that work, right? OpenStreetMap, they don't worry about their impact factor. They're actually using OpenStreetMap uh, to help the lives of people in the tropics. That's what we should be thinking about. Not everything, but unless we actually think, what good is this doing humanity? I mean, our planet is in danger, and we are unable to release the data which will help us solve those problems of the planet and humanity. I've just been in Melbourne for four months. We're building a bicycle map of Melbourne. This is the sort of thing that is happening outside of academia. This is linked open data with DBpedia at the center, which is built from those resources which people care about. These are the resources we should build and put into Wikipedia, and it should, of course, all be open, right? Bitbucket, a tool I use every day. I put my software in a repository not because I'm mandated to, but because it gives me something I want. A repository should provide services for people. It's like a bee and a flower. Each benefits the other. And, and that is how these things have been created. All my code is there. It's all preserved. I can get anything. I can share it with people. And it's got tools far in advance of any uh, academic repository. I've come up with principles of managing research data. I don't have time. Uh, we must build, not rent or buy tools. We can make them. What I'm going to show you here <coughs> was built by a graduate student uh, in one year. And this is the best... Uh, scientific repository for uh, physical science that I know about. Uh, I'm going to search for silver, silver bonds, uh, which are short, uh, and I'm going to view it here. This will take a minute to, to load. All of this was built by a graduate student. All of it is open source, uh, and this is our repository of uh, material structure. It depends on the way, uh, bandwidth here, and it links back to the article, Right, what's that article? Uh, so let's read the article. Um, I'm sorry, this depends on uh, the web a bit. I knew it would um, do this sort of thing. Um, right, so here it is, and you can twiddle it. I mean, it is a completely interactive tool. Crystallography is far in advance of uh, other people in this. They've built their own repository, uh, their own ontology. I'm proud to have been part of it. They have a wonderful journal, Acta Crystallographica E, which is a leading example of a data journal, and Thompson writers have done them the privilege of taking it off the index because they say it's not a proper journal. That is where we are in hock to the arbitrary decisions of the commercial sector. Um, okay, uh, so all of this is open source. It's all built through uh, something I created called the uh, Blue Obelisk with three or four other friends. And uh, we built an open source community for chemistry, and it costs me $20 a year. That is the total cost of this open source community because I give out Blue Obelisks as prizes. So we're going to do the same thing in software, we, uh, in um, uh, other subjects. Uh, 
we've appointed in the OKF two open, uh, uh, two open data fellows, Panton Fellows, Ross Mounts and uh, Sophie Kershaw. Uh, and um, they are doing their PhDs, and they're also doing a fantastic job uh, in um, fighting for open data. Ross went off to Brussels last month and fought uh, the giants of the uh, scholarly publishing industry uh, on the question of wanting to license and restrict text mining. Uh, so we have to uh, use whatever we can do, and as I say, these young people uh, uh, will, do, will do that. We are building a, um, so that's Sophie running a course uh, for young people. There's so much to say here. The thing is to train young people when they come right into the institution, and don't train it with lecturers, train it with graduate students. Sophie is running that course um, in Oxford. Uh, the final thing I want to say is that I'm building uh, text mining tools uh, with Ross. So here's Ross. I've given him an Amy Award. And this is Amy the kangaroo. Amy is the equivalent of the Linux penguin. And Amy is going to liberate the content from all of the scientific literature. Uh, we have, uh, we can do this on a scale. We did 500,000 patents in four days on the desktop. So it's not that. The only thing is the publisher's lawyers. That is the major problem. Uh, and uh, it converts uh, these, first of all, to SVG, then it converts them to XML, and then it adds uh, semantics. And in October uh, 2013, in the UK, the Harvard Greaves Commission was accepted. It is then going to be legal to text mine, content mine, scientific papers, uh, and publish the results non-commercial. And that is the law. Now, I expect opposition from the companies. I'd love to hear somebody from Elsevier say, yes, we're delighted for you to go ahead, um, and I'd like them to have the authority to make that stick. Um, so, final thing there. So what we're doing, here's a phylogenetic tree. There are 10,000 of those published each year. Each costs several thousand CPU hours. Um, and so it's probably of the order of hundreds of millions of dollars spent on it. And that is all the data you get, just a picture on a bit of paper. No data, no nothing. So what Amy does is actually to extract that into structured XML. It's been a lot of work, um, and um, it's not finished yet. If you want to join, that's fine. But we can read the literature into semantic form if the publishers don't stop us. But the publishers have been dragging their feet every time uh, we contact them. The culture has to change. So finally, I, have been, I spend half my time fighting. Uh, we're fighting in Europe because the publishers are trying to tie down text mining. So the final thing is, what should we do? Well, we're building an open research data handbook, and we would love people uh, to be involved in, just like we built the um, open journalism handbook. And we want to run hackathons. So this is my final slide here. Uh, run hackathons in things that matter to real people based on science, based on scholarship, biodiversity. That is a, uh, you know, we can do that. We've got all of the tools. Economics of cities, transport, and we're just starting material science. We've launched the semantic web for uh, material science uh, last uh, month. So we have to work for the benefit of humanity. Please come and collaborate with us and join us. It'll be us. <laughs>